Today I'll be talking about my right hand, my bow grip, my right elbow, my right arm, right shoulder, you get the idea. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome to the second episode of Violin Playing. Explain. Explain. A teacher of mine used to say that the right hand is your bank account, because the better you sound, the more money you make. I wish that were true. The right hand is incredibly important, as it controls your entire sound, articulation, dynamics, and all these expressive tools that we have at our disposal. Okay, let's break it up, starting with our bow grip. This is what mine looks like. You see the fingers are a little bit spread apart and the thumb is in the middle of the pinky and the index finger so that I get a good balance. So here's how I set up my bow grip. So the stick of the bow goes right into this joint, like so. And the thumb goes obviously against the frog at about, I would say, a 45 degree angle so I can keep pushing against it. The thumb is bent. It's more bent when I'm closer to the frog but I'll talk about it in detail later. It allows you to push downwards. So I would definitely have an angle to the frog. The thumb and the middle finger build a ring. And this is basically the starting point. Also, at the same time, it acts as a pivot point because when I put the index and the pinky at roughly the same distance from the thumb and from this ring, it acts as a pivot point. So I have perfect balance that way. And then the ring finger goes roughly on the eye of the bow, in this case it's the Coda Bow logo, but you get the idea, that's my bow hold. At the tip your index works the hardest because you have to press into the string and make up for the lack of arm weight that you don't have at the tip. And at the frog it's the pinky that works the hardest because it needs to balance out all that weight that's on the other side of the violin now. You see? All of that. The entire hand is leaning more towards the pinky, I'm almost going this way which is kind of the opposite of what I see mostly, which is this, or even this, or... The entire hand is leaning more towards your pinky, which I think is very important, because it gives you more balance and more flexibility by the frog, which seems to be a very scary place for most violinists, which is why many avoid playing there altogether. And that's such a shame, because I feel like the frog is actually the place where you have the most power and control, if you're doing it the right way. This kind of setup is also great with chords because it gives you a lot of flexibility. There'll be a separate video on chords coming soon, but again, little sneak peek. I feel like it's hard to separate all these topics from one another because they're all so intertwined. It's almost impossible to talk about your left hand without mentioning your right hand and so forth, so I'm trying my best. There's always been much discussion whether the thumb should be bent or not. Mine is bent, I prefer it that way. I feel like it gives me even more this springiness feeling when I play a chord or when I go down bow. It feels very much like I'm dragging the, pushing actually, the bow down and it's a very satisfying feeling and it gives me more control, you have more grip in a way. Also it allows me to go even lower with my fingers when I really curl them. And I realize also the closer I get to the frog the more my fingers and my thumb are curled. Look at this. This is what I was talking about earlier curling up the fingers as you're coming to the frog. And this is a very, very, very important thing to do. This way you're basically preparing the bow change already so it can be really smooth. You see when I'm doing this, I stay in the curled up position for a little bit longer. Some people do it way too quickly and that results in a jittery and an accent actually on the down bow. You want to maintain control. You curl up your fingers and then as you're going back you gradually let go again. Now when it comes to my wrist, my elbow and my shoulder I like to keep all of those very very low. And that's no matter what string I'm actually playing on. I realize that this goes pretty much against what everybody else teaches but it works for me. I really like to take advantage of that arm weight that you have on the G string when you're really low and I feel like that's where you need it the most. It's the thickest string, why should you lift up your elbow and take all that weight away? Because I feel like when you lift up your arm artificially you're setting yourself up for those 
for those shaky bow changes. Like I'm working too hard, shouldn't be this hard. Also what I've realized is that what I do is by curling my fingers up, I tilt the bow 45 degrees forward. I'm trying to create a 45 degree angle this way. And you can do this with me as an exercise right now. By curling my fingers only, I'm making the angle change of the bow. Now what does that do? It helps me to keep my wrist and the whole setup low for the reasons that I mentioned earlier. So you may ask, how do I do string crossings at all if I'm not using my elbow or my arm? The answer is with my fingers and basically my forearm, are, forearm a little bit, but it's mostly my fingers and my wrist and just the forearm. It's this kind of motion rather than this kind of motion. There's a great exercise for these string crossings. Look at me doing the string crossings entirely with the fingers. You see, my knuckles and my wrist and my forearm, everything is pretty much set. I'm not moving it an inch. I'm just using my fingers to adjust the levels of the string. It's not easy, but it's a great workout for your hand and for the flexibility of your fingers. And then you can apply it pretty much everywhere. The result of that is that my hand position and my bow grip actually is a little bit different on the G string than it is on the E string. I'm leaning much more on the pinky when I'm playing on the G string, no matter what I'm playing, than when I'm on the E string. Here I have the luxury not to be completely like this, even though it's still very flat, but this is more extreme if you, if you look at my hand. So my fingers are actually acting like the suspension on the car, a really smooth ride. Every single downboard that I start, very much at the frog, I start from this extremely curled up position. And then I can release it later. It gives you a tremendous amount of control by the frog and also it makes your chords much richer. You see how I'm starting the G string completely this way. Here's a little bonus for you if you're having trouble playing by the frog. Now take the bow and hold it a little bit higher, let's say here. And now try playing by the frog. and really go all the way to the frog. You can completely exaggerate and go like, I don't know, halfway up here. It's gonna be ridiculous. All right, this is kind of extreme, but now when you switch back to the regular plane position, you'll feel like you're basically playing by the tip. That's it guys, a short introduction into what I do with my right hand. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions at all. Share your experience, what you think of any of this, whether we agree or disagree, I'm happy to have a discussion. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video so I can keep making them. Also please consider checking out my Patreon, I'm offering a bunch of things like lessons and so forth, so you don't wanna miss out on that. Happy practicing and see you in the next one.